Hello everyone and welcome to my review of 2022 Gateway laptop. Let's start with design and build quality. The outer shell is made of metal and doesn't feel cheap. Although it's a fingerprint magnet. Coming to the inside uh, and, and you need two fingers to open it up. And coming to the inside, the base is made of plastic and it feels good. The keyboard flex is minimum. Coming to the display, it's a 14 inch display, I'll talk about it later. But the bezels are very uh, narrow and you get a windows key here, I'll, I'll talk about it later again. The exhaust is under the display and the fingerprint scanner is below the keyboard. Let's talk about keyboard. There is no backlit and the keys feel cheap. One point to note is this is a revised model. So th there's a home and a page up and page down uh, keys, although it, it was not advertised. Talking about touchpad, it feels plastic. I'm not sure if it's glass and it does its job pretty well. Let's talk about connectivity and ports. It comes with two USB type A ports on the right side as well as an SD card leader. This is a spring loaded one and a headphone jack. On the front and back there are no ports. On the left side we have a full size HDMI port as well as another USB 3 port. Power delivery is available through the USB C port as well as the power, uh, power jack. This is a charger that comes out of the box. It doesn't have any ground connection. So you can feel electricity passing through the metal, metal top of the laptop. To fix it, you can buy an aftermarket or another OEM charger. So this one is from Dell. It's a 65 watt USB type C charger. The laptop charges through power delivery. So you can instead connect this charger and get full benefit of it without any grounding issues. Talking about the display, it's a 14 inch touch display and color accuracy is 62% sRGB. It's, the, it's not suitable for any video editing or photo editing purposes, but for content consumption, it's pretty fine. Also, it's touch enabled and the touch is pretty responsive. Since it's tuned by THX, I had a lot of expectations, but sound quality on the laptop is very mediocre. Also note, don't be fooled by the speaker grills. Only this small part is real speaker. Let's talk about performance of the laptop. The testing was done with the laptop plugged in as well as on a laptop cooler stand. Let's start with Geekbench 6. This is the CPU score I got from the laptop and it's on par with the average score on Geekbench browser. This is the compute score of the laptop. This is through OpenCL and this is through Vulkan. And it's on par with the other scores. So you're not losing any performance going for a cheaper laptop. And these are the SSD speeds. For a SATA SSD, this, these scores are a bit on lower end of the spectrum. Although do note you have an additional slot available so you can upgrade to a faster M.2 storage. You have a windows key on the display as well as a privacy shutter. You can check video quality as well as microphone through this demo. Windows hello unlock is not available through the camera. You do have a fingerprint option though. And it works quite well. You, have, you get a fully unlocked BIOS which can be accessed through escape key. You get a 54 watt hour battery and battery life can be anywhere between 3 and 6 hours depending on your work case. So let's talk about advantages and disadvantages of the laptop. The first advantage of course is the price. At 299 this is a no brainer. The second advantage in my opinion is the touch screen. It's responsive and does its job pretty well. Also the performance of Core i5-1235U is on par with previous gen gaming laptops. 
let's talk about disadvantages the first disadvantage in my opinion is it only comes in 8 gb variant option and it's soldered memory so you cannot upgrade it unless you are technically sound the second disadvantage in my opinion is the fan noise when charged with the default charger it 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 ramps up pretty badly even when watching youtube videos the third disadvantage is there is no vtd meaning you cannot do an io pass through from virtualization although keep in mind virtualization does work and it's hardware accelerated